bring the topic on the discussion on Sunday uh, mo morning on SANA. So we will go on with uh, an open discussion. We have um, four presentations and one poster. Um, the first presentation uh, from um, Professor Pauletti and Della Francesca will talk about uh, bioindicator, biodiversity, and genus Loshi. Then we will have um, uh, a presentation of, um, the, of, of, of the group uh, of University of Florence, led, led by um, Professor Concetta Vazzana, uh, that will talk about the result of 25 years comparison in a long-term experiment in the Mediterranean, in the hilly parts of Florence. Then um, we will have uh, a paper by uh, Bill and, and et al., the group of uh, Igun Aksoy from Turkey, uh, Soil Management for Sustainable Organic Olive Farming in, in, in Turkey. And uh, the fourth uh, from uh, Martinis Minotus and uh, Porizdakis from, from Greece, uh, Path Through Biodiversity, Methodology recor of Recording, Monitoring and Promoting Its Importance and Uniqueness. And the poster of Soriano et al, will, um, uh, also from Turkey, um, it's a, a poster about water uh, hydrophobia in agricultural soils, influence on water movement in the soil in adapting to climate change and water decrease. So the whole session will deal with uh, ecological value and, and externalities of organic agriculture from biodiversity, soil, fertility, um, um, crop protection and, and management of sustainable soil. Okay, so I give uh, the, the, the floor to um, Della Francesca, yes. and uh, yes. so if you can manage to stay in 10, 15 minutes, and then at the end okay. there is space for question. Okay, thank you. Allora. Good afternoon, I am Maria Della Francesca, I am a farmer. Uh, the well-being of the planet is intimately associated to biodiversity preservation. And this is the result, it is the result of an ecological and ethical behavior of world citizens toward nature. Uh, to, to achieve this goal, to reach this result, it is necessary that a big part of citizens, better all, but a, a big part, an increasing number of citizens, irrespect, uh, all irrespective of their social classes, become active promoters of biodiversity protection for personal belief that can happen only after having experienced and realized what could be otherwise missed from their own well-being uh, when even a small part of biodiversity is lost. Uh, nature is the only teacher, and nature teaches the scientists, and they learn and study and give us uh, results and uh, uh, scientific knowledge. The same uh, nature uh, teaches the, the, the farmers uh, that have the unique opportunity to have a direct contact uh, with the nature every day. And uh, uh, from nature they perceive uh, um, uh, emotional knowledge. Uh, farmers today play a very important role in the preservation of biodiversity because uh, taking in, into account the information, the data, uh, coming us, coming them from, from the scientists, and uh, starting from their experience and uh, their no emotional knowledge, they have the opportunity to shorten, to create the condition to shorten the distance between uh, nature and, uh, and people uh, in a way that can quickly and easily uh, feel an emotional, in, in, in a way that the people can, uh, can uh, have a, an emotional uh, feeling with, uh, with nature. Uh, this is the unique connection that can relate uh, people and nature uh, in such a way that they can, uh, they can um, become active promoters of the biodiversity for personal belief and for interests, because they don't want to lose something that is good for their healing, for their well-being. Uh, the Alta Ura and Monteceva organic farms uh, in the northeastern uh, Italy, uh, in the land of Padova, uh, try to, to provide a small contribution to the preservation of uh, biodiversity, characterizing every place, not by using data or statistics or scientific arguments that are comprehended by a few minds, 
but uh, uh, searching the emotional impact with the spirit of the place. The spirit of the place uh, was the uh, genius lodge, as uh, Latins call it, and uh, Latins had really well understood how much uh, it, it was, uh, it is, it was, it is important, uh, the spirit of a place for the life of a, of a place and the community that live in, uh, in, in that place. Uh, and this can touch and can reach the heart of the people in such a, a, an important way that even they can also change their, life, their lifestyle. And the day later, they, they, they can become active promoters of the biodiversity preservation. Biodiversity is the background of every place and it can be related, uh, deeply related to the genius logic of the spirit of the place. Our cuisine, cuisine proposing the cultivated and spontaneous, and spontaneous uh, vegetable uh, uh, biodiversity of the place uh, interprets and becomes a messenger of the spirit of the place, connecting people with the place where they live in. Uh, when people feel uh, intimately related to a place, uh, to the place where they live, where they work, where they uh, entertain themselves and uh, they derive nourishment, uh, they, they can dedicate to that place and they, uh, possibly they will become spontaneously uh, uh, protectors uh, of, of the place and they feel uh, responsible for uh, its uh, future life and uh, also can uh, think to, to, to change, to, to plan some changes uh, that d do not offend the spirit of the place of, uh, or uh, worse toward the, the spirit of the, the place, therefore losing the, the opportunity of the connection with the, with the place. Uh, the bond between people and place if a, a sort of social capital, perhaps the most meaningful and important so that a community may continue to live uh, in that place. Perhaps the most universal method to shorten the distance between nature and people is at the table. And with this, with, uh, this aim, since several years, uh, we have uh, committed ourselves to experiment uh, uh, using uh, both spontaneously and cultivated vegetable, vegetables uh, in, uh, in, in cooking. Uh, our goal is to, to offer to people, to customers, uh, uh, to people coming to, to our farm, an array of tasty and savory uh, knowledge. knowledge. Uh, if eating biodiversity will be preferred to conventional food, it will arouse interest for nature, also in those people who are not spontaneously attracted by it. Food is often the only way to stimulate them, to create deep bonds with the environment and to become its active promoters for personal experience and for interest to continue to savor tastes that would otherwise be lost. Uh, recently, um, the genius logic has, has been uh, considered a, a very, very important part in uh, preserving the territory by UNESCO, by the Council of Europe, and uh, by European institution, institutions. In 2008, uh, the International Council of uh, Monuments and Sites um, organized an uh, international scientific uh, uh, symposium uh, entitled, uh, entitled uh, Finding the Spirit of the Place Between Tangible and Untangible and adopted the Declaration of Quebec known as uh, Preserving the Spirit of the Place. This year, in, uh, this year in June, July, in Gothenburg, uh, in, in the uh, Eighth Environmental Education Congress, one of the themes suggested uh, was uh, reclaiming the spirit of the place in a, in a digital age. The spirit of the place is a very precious gift that uh, comes 
to us from the past, uh, filtered by the time and uh, by several generations of human beings, of animals and of, uh, of vegetables. And uh, it is very, very important, it is necessary for a, for a, for a community to, to, may, to, to continue to live in that place. Uh, we have not uh, available statistics of uh, the appreciation of our method to, uh, to approach, to, to, uh, to attract people closer to nature. But uh, we have praised many times for our customers and uh, for our common customers and for uh, Professor Pauletti and Professor Altieri who uh, visited the farm in uh, June and uh, include, <laughs> Uh, the, the, the visit is uh, com, um, completed by the taste of our uh, dishes. And uh, I think that uh, they appreciated the, the, the visit, including the, the tastes. And uh, also Vandana Shiva was uh, with us uh, la last year. And uh, she appreciated very much the, the way, uh, the way, with the, the way that we, uh, we adopt to to attract people closer to biodiversity by means of food. And also the young people visiting the farm that are our future, it is very important that uh, they are uh, impressed, that they, are, uh, they, they like this, uh, uh, these dishes because they, uh, these dishes are the media to, uh, to, to arise curiosity in them. Uh, uh, since three years, we have uh, uh, groups, American groups coming uh, from America. The name is, uh, uh, the association is People to People. And uh, um, they spend 12 days in Italy. And one of these 12 days uh, is at the farm. And uh, every day they have to write the, their impressions, the impressions of the, of the visit. And their teacher uh, collects the impression. And one among, uh, among all I want to tell you, <coughs> Uh, um, a, a food teacher coming from New Jersey last, uh, last year uh, wrote to me that uh, uh, reading the, mm, the impressions of the, of the, of the students, uh, he, uh, he, he could tell that uh, uh, the visit of the farm uh, had an, an, an impact of their way of thinking. This is our, really our goal. And this year, one, uh, one boy, um, we, we were uh, uh, visiting the vegetable gardens, and uh, he was uh, behind me, and uh, I asked him to, to, um, to, to taste uh, one zucchino. And uh, it was late uh, June, and uh, we harvested, uh, we picked up uh, a zucchino from the, the plant, and uh, he he told me, no, I don't want to taste zucchino because I don't like it. I have never, I don't know, no, this is the uh, vegetable that I don't want to, to taste. And I asked him, hey, please, but here we, we, we are uh, in the vegetable garden, we, 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 we cut the zucchino, it's fresh. And uh, he said, okay, I, I, I try. And then when he came back to, to sta the States, um, his teacher wrote me that, uh, uh, this boy wants to finish very quickly the studies to come and work in my farm, and uh, this, uh, his favorite vegetable is a zucchino. And uh, uh, also, when uh, small children, when small children come and visit the farm, uh, and they eat the honey directly from the comb, and uh, and I ask them, what do you like more? You like this, or you like the candy that your mother bought? in the supermarket. No, I like this very much. I like better. This is another goal. So we have not uh, statistics, but uh, we have collected some, uh, some, uh, uh, pro some good uh, impressions of our guests. And uh, um, when we go to the, to the vegetable garden, we go with two baskets. One for uh, cultivated herbs and one for uncultivated herbs. And both baskets go to the kitchen and then we prepared both. So uh, also uncultivated uh, 
vegetables are a resource for the food, for the nutrition. And also the uncultivated uh, uh, vegetables are in full production in spring when the vegetable garden is not yet productive. So they complement each other very well. Uh, mm, among all the recipes, I want to tell you one that I, I like very much. I like the, the taste, the flavor. I like, I like because it's not for, for rich, but for poor. And uh, everybody in the Mediterranean basin can prepare this. That is the fig leaves syrup. And I like also the, the way uh, in which uh, came out this, uh, this, uh, this uh, recipe. Because last year, in 2014, uh, it was a rainy summer, very rainy summer. So the, the figs were not good. Uh, we, we couldn't eat them, we couldn't offer them because they have no taste. And even adding sugar and preparing uh, the jam, it was not an, an acceptable result. So I faced the, 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 the tree and I, I thought, but you have not only the, 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 the fruits, you have also the, the, the leaves. And so why can we, we have to try to, to use also the leaves. And uh, we tried uh, to make uh, with sugar a, a syrup, and uh, the, syrup, the fig leaf syrup uh, tastes uh, uh, figs more than the, the, the figs. And uh, it's, uh, it's something very, very special to eat uh, with, uh, with cheese. And uh, this, is, this was an opportunity that we took when uh, the the common uh, uh, parts of the, of, uh, of the tree <laughs> were not uh, useful because they were without taste. And so I, I think that, uh, so I like this because uh, everybody in the Mediterranean, even the poorest, uh, can uh, use the, the leaves, uh, can find. And there are a lot, a lot of, of leaves, of trees, of plants, of, uh, of uh, grasses that uh, are known or are unknown, but even those who are known are not uh, used in kitchen. And uh, mm, in, the, in the end, I, I have a dream. Uh, I have a dream that is uh, uh, to, uh, to create a movement of uh, uh, vegetable garden, moving vegetable gardens, vegetable garden of hope, that is a project uh, I hope with, the project, with this project that uh, um, people uh, and young people that are, uh, that are our future living in uh, different countries in the Mediterranean basin, basin united from the common interest to, of uh, uh, listening and on, uh, learning and practicing uh, uh, sustainable uh, cultivation methods, uh, both uh, through self-commitment and mutual exchange um, of, uh, of, inform of information, uh, they, uh, they will win the battle of, against uh, the ignorance toward nature. And uh, mutual knowledge uh, will be followed by good relationships. And uh, good relationships uh, um, based on, uh, on trust and on uh, mutual cooperation and prevailing on distrust or uh, worse, on uh, an empty between et ethnical groups, uh, uh, different uh, religions groups, and they can do something together uh, motivated by uh, common interest. And uh, perhaps uh, uh, often uh, people <laughs> are in... Uh, uh, they fight themselves because they have not the opportunity uh, to, to know each other with a common interest. It's a widespread behavior uh, that common, today common, today uh, global crisis uh, is not only economic but uh, also ethic and on the count of ignorance. This is not a science fiction because uh, in uh, Lebanon now, uh, Lebanese and uh, Syrians are working together to create a vegetable garden in accord, uh, according to sustainable met methods. And, uh, and uh, they are uh, uh, 
restoring and finishing. Uh, uh, and they are restoring uh, two roots of um, two roots of of a carob tree on either side on either side of a common road. Because when we hear we speak about sustainability and the biodiversity, we f we feel this with uh, this word with only one meaning. But when we we speak about sustainability and biodiversity in the basin, in, in the Mediterranean basin, uh, we can give another meaning because uh, when people, uh, d different peoples have different uh, uh, beliefs uh, and uh, religions uh, di are different from religions, but the sustainability and the uh, biodiversity is a common <laughs> interest. And so they can work together for a common interest and then in the meanwhile uh, um, know uh, each other better. And so I hope that uh, this, uh, this project will be spread uh, on uh, more countries in the Mediterranean and they can uh, know each other better and, uh, and achieve two goals. One is the sustainability and, uh, of, the, of, the, of the nature and of, the, of uh, animals and vegetables and the other is the, the sustainability of the human beings. Yes. <laughs> Because I, I speak about emotional impact, the spirit of the place, I have uh, bring you some uh, this lavender biscuits. So, so you have to taste. Uh, so it's uh, something concrete, something real. Thank you very much, uh, Maria, for this um, yeah very nice presentation. The importance of. Um, biodiversity, both uh, planted and, and uh, wild, uh, in not talking about agroecological terms. So how much um, organic agriculture can, uh, uh, from one side, uh, develop biodiversity, from the other side, how much organic needs biodiversity in order to, um, to, to have a, um, a sustainable production or practice, uh, best practice without the needs of external input. So this is a mutual um, importance and also, of course, uh, the, 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 the local knowledge, so the ethno-botanical, ethno, uh, yes, the, the, the transfer of, of traditional knowledge and, uh, and the transmission to new generation. This is also very, very important for the, so the, the, the development of you know, the three level of, of biodiversity and in particular the cultural biodiversity. So I think this is a very um, in, important uh, topic. Um, are there maybe immediate questions to, to Maria's group and uh, from Professor, uh, for Professor Pauletti? No, it was his uh, presentation. It was. No, it's not a presentation. It's something very different. <coughs> it's not a memory, but soil. Yes, yes, please. <coughs> yes, please, please, come. Uh, take your. You, sh you have to. Professor Poletti have done Genius Lodge for is also 30 years. Biodiversity in the soil. Yes. And organic farming is dealing with biodiversity in the soil and the farm. And normally, when we speak of earthworms, my students say it's one name, one species, earthworms. You, how, how many names you have for earthworms? <laughs> yeah, in Italy, we have 90 species different. And when we speak of earthworm, there are the big one, the larger one, which are deep burrowing species that are very important for agriculture. And when you see this soil like this one, that means that you have a big burrowing species on the soil, like this one. That is important. The smaller one creates little work. But normally, when you speak of a good soil, 
in organic farming, you represent this species, that is Ezenia fetida. This is only living in compost, in manure, but not in soil. This is a, normally a big mistake we do because what we need for having a good soil, good genus loci, is to have big burrowing species. And to get big burrowing species on the field, you need a proper uh, operation of uh, tillage, minimum tillage, good mulching, not compaction of the soil, and so on. This is a part of the production package of organic pharma and knowledge of organic pharma. Again, this is a big burrowing species. This is the work done on the soil surface. And these are the smaller ones which are less important in terms of having a good soil situation. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, and um, Professor Poletti have done for several years uh, um, lots of work, and also he recently show um, me and the the video that uh, his group did uh, working in the in vineyards, so how it's possible to improve soil fertility through this kind of activity, so soil fertility analysis and, and, um, and uh, earthworms activity. Um, okay, sorry, I move in the role of, of uh, speaker and um, um, I'm, I'm going to present uh, the, um, yes, the, the, uh, the collection of results uh, that uh, the um, University of Florence uh, group that I had the pleasure to, to join for um, around 10, 10 years and that I'm still uh, collaborating with, led by Concetta Vazzana, that she's uh, over there. And um, regarding in general uh, ecological um, sustainability. So um, as we, we all know, organic agriculture have at least from the movement point of view, a very um, huge um, definition. So it's not talk we are not only talking about uh, health of soil, ecosystem, and, but also people, so process, biodiversity. And now what, what uh, very well the, the speaker of this morning um, and this afternoon um, talk about. And, and so um, some of these uh, principles are also included in the European uh, legislation. For sure, the ecological um, principles are um, at least well uh, better defined. Organic agriculture has grown a lot, so today uh, we are in, in global 43 million hectares and 170 countries is uh, uh, reporting organic uh, activity. Um, and in the world is around one percentage, so it's not, it's still a niche, and so uh, correctly this morning uh, Pablo and other talk about going out to the niche, so scaling up. Um, still we have some, some challenges because in order to um, develop organic farming uh, globally, and in particular in the Mediterranean, um, we uh, should focus on food productivity from one side uh, and uh, sustainability in, in general on the other side uh, in order to fight, uh, you know, to, to, to face climate change mitigation, adaptation, um, also to improve more biodiversity, soil and water, so the sustainable, so the natural resource uh, and in general socioeconomic uh, aspect. And if from one side uh, um, we can um, intensify with uh, ecological uh, practice, the, the system, so with uh, um, green manure, with, uh, cropping, with the intercropping, uh, um, uh, biodiversity component in the farm. Um, on the other hand, we, we, uh, we have to reduce waste uh, and uh, um, so shift from input substitution approach to um, system redesign approach. Um, in Italy, um, and in general in the Mediterranean, there are several uh, 
uh, long-term uh, comparison system. And for example, in the other session, uh, Canali, Stefano Canali is going to present the network of this uh, long-term experiment. Uh, and um, the, I can say the longest uh, is the one uh, developed by University of Florence uh, that is called Molte near uh, Florence uh, Hilly part. Um, that was developed uh, since uh, 1991. Um, and it's uh, we, we call Molte because Molte Pal Montepaldi is the the fa is the farm of the faculty of uh, what it was fa uh, faculty of agricultural university, and um, mm, it is um, um, similar from for example the, the feeble one, but uh, different from from them. Um, we don't have uh, small plots, but we have like uh, three. Uh, agroecosystem, so we call small farms or, or uh, three agro micro agroecosystem. Um, each uh, of them have uh, has a, an area of uh, uh, five hectares. Uh, so we have uh, around uh, 15 hectares uh, under this uh, research uh, station, and uh, it is divided uh, between. Uh, um, it's a comparison of uh, management. Uh, so we have the conventional um, agroecosystem uh, that uh, consists of two fields, uh, um, and we replace there the the, the common uh, crop rotation that is not uh, uh, is almost a monoculture. Let's say it's a um, two years crop rotation between a winter cereal and a spring uh, cereal like maize. And then we have two, um, what we have now, or organic system. One we call or, uh, organic, old organic system because uh, it was converted to organic sin since 1992. Um, and it's a four-year crop rotation with four fields. And the, the second one, the one in the middle, is a, a young organic system because uh, it has uh, a, um, uh, it was under integrated agriculture from the beginning till 2000, then from 2001 converted to organic. Uh, okay, in this table, is, you, you cannot read, but there is the summary of the uh, characteristic and the techniques adapted by the, uh, these two main periods, so the first 10 years until 2000, and then the second uh, uh, practice between 2001 till uh, today. And uh, uh, th in the three system, we uh, run the same uh, um, tillage uh, and uh, type of, uh, it's not uh, irrigated, so it's rain fed. And um, uh, what is changed is the cropping system, the crop rotation, and uh, of course the uh, fertilization typology and amount. Uh, and in the organic system, we have also intercropping and uh, uh, green manure in the conventional, uh, no. Um, the weeding management also is different because in the organic sector we refer mainly to crop rotation and some mechanical controls. In uh, uh, the conventional one we have also um, chemical weeding. Um, and pest and disease management uh, is also managed differently. So uh, in the organic we have uh, um, ecological infrastructure and crop rotation and also local uh, variety. In the conventional we, we deal with um, two-year crop rotation and chemical control. Um, okay, so I'm going to present what, what are the results uh, we, we, we have now after, let's say, 16, 18 years of application of this long-term uh, comparison. Uh, the, first topic, the first issue I would like to talk is about uh, uh, agrobiodiversity. So we assessed uh, with the methodology of uh, um, biodiversity indicator the uh, both uh, stru structural and associated biodiversity, so exactly what also Maria della Francesca told uh, before, um, with different uh, indicators, the, uh, the, the planet biodiversity was assessed with, uh, for example, dimension and, and, um, and diversity of, of ecological infrastructure, the crop rotation, the, the, the species share and the species group, um, and we did the, the, the assessment with, uh, let's say, with, with uh, specific indicators, uh, an algorithm, and then the desired result. For associated biodiversity, we calculate the ecological infrastructure rich, richness, the diversity, um, the herbaceous, uh, also for weed and, uh, and natural um, herbaceous crop, are both
boreal diversity and, um, and also in cropping system. Um, the, the result uh, here, uh, this, this paper deal with three years result, but we have several data of, of the long of the whole uh, period um, show that, that there are a clear, clear evidence of uh, increasing. So the, the organic uh, sector is, is uh, performing better uh, compared to the conventional one and also uh, improve over time, especially the associated biodiversity. Um, although some improvement can still be done for the uh, planet biodiversity. Of course, a four year crop rotation is not uh, let's say maybe enough or a 20 years crop rotation is for sure better, okay? The second is uh, uh, a study done uh, in the presence of uh, aphid predators in common wheat. So we, we choose the wheat uh, field uh, in the three uh, agro system and um, we uh, detected uh, together with a group of uh, entomologists in the uh, University of Florence uh, some uh, um, coccinellidae and also other um, that, that are not present here but also other um, uh, beneficial uh, insects and uh, as also Miguel uh, explained uh, this morning in the, in the vineyard, we assessed the, not, not only the presence, but also the distance, so how far the, the uh, insect move or how far from the uh, surrounding uh, ecological infrastructure the insect can be still uh, um, useful to control, for example, aphids. And um, we've, we found uh, um, some statistical um, evidence uh, from the number of, uh, of the presence of lady birds, uh, of some of them, not all the species, only some of them, um, and also a more complex and um, presence uh, if the ecological infrastructure are richer. What does it mean? There is also a relationship between if the, the, um, the ecological uh, infrastructure that are not all, all the same around the, the, the three uh, system is more, uh, let's say, is longer and more complex. So with the increase of ecological diversity of the ecological infrastructure, also the, um, the, the species diversity of insects are uh, higher, okay? The second group of um, uh, evidence that uh, I would like to present is related to soil. No? For uh, soil is the fundamental, um, can I say, uh, is the heart of, of uh, organic and also agroecology. And uh, uh, we assessed uh, uh, the data of uh, 16 years, so we put together, um, related to um, uh, for example, for, for the, uh, sorry, I, I will go here later on one moment. Um, we assessed the nitrogen input, so we uh, calculated all the uh, input of the three system for each crop uh, in the crop in the crop rotation um, from 92 until 2008 in the three system. And uh, um, we calculate the nitrogen input, the nitrogen out output, uh, um, the surplus, and then the, the, the efficiency of the system. And so the total nitrogen input in the organic uh, crop was 20 percentage and 40 percentage lower in the old and, and in the young compared to the conventional. So there is a huge reduction of uh, input. Um, and also the um, surplus, the surplus, the nitrogen surplus in the conventional was much higher. So there is a higher risk of uh, um, statistical, with statistical evidence uh, of uh, uh, nitrogen losses in the um, environment uh, with water, um, flow and, and uh, um, um, the leaching uh, respect to the, to the convention. And this is for the, the, the year. Then also related to, we assessed not only the budget, but also how the, the soil fertility, the, the content of nitrogen and carbon in, and, and also of humic uh, fraction inside the soil. And uh, we, we had the, the better result in the organic. So even, even though the input are lower, uh, the organic soil was uh, better in, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in carbon sequestration, even though the, the external input was, especially for, for nitrogen, was, was uh, diminishing. Um, and we have um, a 13 percentage higher in carbon in the organic soil compared to the conventional. And uh, uh, also for the nitrogen storage, we have 9 percentage higher than the conventional. Then I go back to the uh, productivity in this 16 period that the um, yield of the system didn't uh, provide any statistical differences. So in 
compared to other meta-analysis and also long-term experiments that uh, have a huge um, diversity, some studies says that organic production have a uh, minus 20, sometimes says now it's uh, plus 5 according to the climate, to the soil, to the pedoclimatic condition, to the crop, of course. Um, in this long-term experiment, in a Mediterranean context, uh, uh, we, we um, show that uh, in, we don't have evidence of uh, differences. So the, the organic uh, system pro um, pro produce the same amount of, um, of output, of yield. The third level is uh, the biological soil fertility. So we assess this together with the University of Pisa and the group uh, of Manuela Giovannetti, the presence and diversity of mycorrhiza activity in the free soil. Um, also in 2008, so after 16 years of the three cropping system, um, we assessed the glomalin-related soil protein, so the presence of, of uh, uh, protein in the, in the soil, and uh, we, had, uh, statistic, we had statistical evidence, so the arbuscular uh, mycorrhiza fungi that are a very important, uh, play a very important role in, um, um, in, in, in the cycle of, nitrog of nitrogen, of carbon, and also in uh, improving the uptake of nutrient in, in, uh, in crop. Um, so the abundance, the diversity, and the activity were higher in the uh, organic fields, uh, um, and also this, the level, so the, the Shannon index and the equitability of the uh, species of uh, uh, arbuscular mycorrhiza fungi were higher in the, uh, in the both organic. The, we, we didn't have any statistical evidence looking at the soil arthropoids community. So probably um, the disturbance of the soil are similar. So the arthropods didn't show evidence in, in, uh, in uh, number and diversity. Um, the fourth uh, group of data that we collect relate to climate change uh, mitigation. So we assessed the, um, both the greenhouse emission and the carbon sequestration, so the input and the output in, in, in carbon, looking at the system like a, um, a black box, no? so what enter and what go out. And um, both the, um, this is a, a four year studies from 2003 to 2007, we collect all the data, and the, um, the, the emission level of CO2 of carbon, uh, both per unit, so my, uh, tons per hectare, but also per kilo of yield produce, um, was um, much lower in the uh, organic system, was more than half, so 58 and 61 lower compared to the conventional. Um, that is a very promising, uh, there is not other, let's say, data so, so efficient. And, and again, also the carbon sequestration was uh, higher in 40 percentage, 14 percentage higher in the organic uh, system compared to the conventional. So the, from one side, the organic uh, reduced the emission, from the other side, increased the carbon sequestration. Um, okay, here you have the, the, the specific details related to uh, fuel, herbicides, uh, and uh, so in the, in, the, in the two system. And uh, the last is related to energy efficiency. So we, we said that we, we calculate, again in a four-year studies, uh, all the input and all the output, and we convert it in the, into gigajoule. Um, and here you have the, the, for the machinery, for the, um, for the crop residues, uh, so all the inputs were transformed into energy um, value. And uh, the, the total, uh, the final result is that the output input ratio, so the efficiency of the system, um, was better in the organic compared to the conventional, so was uh, plus six, 60 percentage, so 16 versus 9 the efficiency, okay, so we, we had a very, very, um, again, more than half. And, um, and this, of course, have a, a reflection on, on specific energy, so the organic system had uh, an energy consumption for the whole production dry matter about 72 percentage less than in uh, conventional. So here are the, the publication and the paper, and so I thank you for the attention. Um, I will skip the question for later, and um, so I'm going to 
ask uh, to invite uh, on the floor uh, Bilen from uh, Turkey to present uh, um, soil management for a sustainable organic olive oil farming in Turkey. Okay, so I... Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you. Emre, sorry. I... Today I will start with a small introduction about uh, organic olive production in Turkey and I will talk about soil management sy systems for soil management systems and actually these systems are uh, also used in my uh, PhD uh, but I didn't finish my PhD so I will not be giving any results but when we are talking about the effects of the soil management systems on sustainability of organic olive growth uh, Idea of the main idea will be coming from my uh, work from the PhD work. Uh, we will start with a graph of the organic and conventional uh, olive area development in Turkey. As you can see from 2006 to 2013, uh, there is an increase for both conventional and organic area. Uh, but the percentage of the olive orchards organically managed is also increased during the, that time, which uh, shows a move from conventional to organic management systems in Turkey, actually. Uh, in 2013, uh, the figure shows us that 7.8% uh, of the olive orchards are managed organically, which was uh, only 1.2% in 2006. Here in this graph, we can see uh, the organic olive production amount development in Turkey. Uh, it is also showing an increase, which is uh, no surprise that the area is also increasing during this time. But uh, it is also important to uh, point out that there is a decrease of the production per hectare. Uh, this is mainly because of the reduction of the yield for the last uh, two, three, three years uh, because of the climate and pest problems and also because of the new converted organic farms were uh, managed poorly, which is also a, actually an opportunity because it will be very uh, easy to improve these farms, the production amounts. When we are talking about sustainability, it is important to also talk about climate change. And here we can see the surface temperature and precipitation uh, projections of Turkey. As you can see, uh, surface temperature will be increasing in Turkey all around, and uh, precipitation amounts are especially in the region which uh, olive is produced will be reduced. Of, of course, this will be, uh, of course, this will be uh, having important effects because uh, most of the Turkish olive groves are uh, in sloping lands, and uh, this will have uh, problems as there's a, a limited irrigation possibilities in these regions. And uh, organic agriculture is a holistic system uh, in which the inputs have rather small effects in a given year, but have important cumulative effects in longer term, so it's important to uh, think about long-term effects. We will talk about uh, four different soil management systems, as I mentioned. One of them is traditional tillage systems. Second one is reduced tillage or no-till systems. Third one is uh, mulch, using mulch, like straw, pruning residues, or olive oil, industrial residues. And third one is cover crops, single plants as a mixture or a single plant. Uh, we will talk about the effect of these soil management systems on sustainability of the olive oil, uh, sorry, organic olive production systems. Uh, sorry. Nitrogen content of the soil is one of the important limiting factors in organic agriculture, and legume cover crops are introduced in the systems to overcome these limitations. Uh, intensive tillage contributes to the leaching of the nitrogen and on the other hand, 
the use of alternative soil management strategies as no-till, cover cropping, and mulch uh, could limit the leaching. Cover crops increase soil organic matter content and consequently improves soil quality. Intensive tillage contributes to the organic matter mineralization, thus enhancing uh, CO2 emissions from the soil and contributing to the climate change. The combined introduction of cover crops and no-till systems uh, limit these effects. Natural vegetation in no-till and cover crop systems slows down the ra raindrops and limits the runoff. Also, plant root systems keep soil together, which limits erosion drastically. Most of the modern olive orchards in Turkey are created in flat fields nowadays, but uh, traditionally the olive orchards are located in sloping lands, where erosion is an important issue if uh, frequent plowing is uh, done in these areas. Crossing cover crops, no-till and uh, mulch to manage the soil reduce the chance to lose the rainwater as a runoff. Also, root systems of cover crops and natural ve vegetation create uh, pores in the soil which help the rainwater infiltrate and recharge the ground aquifers. However, in order to avoid competition between the olive trees and other plants, it is important to pro properly select cover crop species and to identify the period in which the soil has to kept covered with cover crops and natural vegetation. In rain-fed orchards, these management strategies can lead to harvest increase, which is reflected on the economic sustainability. Under the effect of climate change, droughts will become more common in Turkey, and it will be a threat to the sustainability of organic olive orchards. Uh, the use of cover crops is considered one of the feasible adaptive strategy as a water trans and runoff is reduced in organic olive growth. It is well known that weeds are responsible for yield losses in olive growth because they compete with plants for nutrients and waters. Uh, mulch and cover crops can be used to control natural vegetation development. Both systems prevent natural vegetation to get enough sunlight to develop and produce new seeds to generate the next generation of the plants. Uh, weed suppression by mulch or cover crops can be due to mechanical uh, action or, in some cases, the release of the allopathic chemicals. In an organic olive orchard, biodiversity is probably will not be the uh, first reason to start or, uh, using cover crops, but as the cultural practices on uh, cover crops are limited and the heterogeneity of the olive grove is increased, different insects and bird groups number increases and cover crops creates an ideal place <laughs> for other wildlife too. In this context, cover crops represents an opportunity to deliver multiple ecosystem services in the same crop and growing season as several species can be grown uh, together. Soil microorganisms uh, respond positively to sustainable orchard management systems as no-till, cover crops, and organic mulch too. This community is consequently influenced the soil fertility and plant growth by regulating natural availability and turnover. Traditional tillage systems involve a number of negative as aspects such as water loss by evaporation, the destruction of the soil structure, loss of organic matter and nutrients, and high erosion rates. According to olive uh, growth, uh, sustainability is reduced. The introduction of cover crops, on the other hand, has several benefits in all the growths if planting time and species are properly selected. Cover crops should be introduced in the rainy period in Turkey when they do not compete with uh, olive trees for water. Cover crops can compete seriously with the olive trees for the water and mineral nutrients in the first three, four years after grow planting. However, if the grove is irrigated, cover crops can be planted in the interrows during this uh, period too. The, uh, this is a table of ecosystem services of some of the cover crops uh, which are uh, evaluated in Turkey or uh, regions which have similar ecologic systems. As a conclusion, sustainable soil management strategies in olive groves are performed with the aim to let the implementation of uh, ecosystem services feasible. These services are more important in organic systems in which the quality of the production and the ecological effects of the production are at least as important as the yield amount. 
The most promising sustainable uh, soil management strategy is based on cover crops introduction in Turkey. However, there, there are several aspects that should be considered before selecting a specific cover crop. It's not easy to select the most suitable cover crop species in the countries like, like Turkey, which has several different ecological conditions. To overcome these difficulties, research on sustainable soil management strategies and cover crops should continue and widespread in different ecological conditions. Uh, studies should be aimed to provide criteria to select cover crop under specific conditions and in accordance to the use of different methodologies. Proper decision support tools are required to help farmers and technicians to select the optimal species and mixture for a given purpose and context. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Amber. And um, yes, it's um, of course olive olive oil soil soil management is a very important uh, aspect for the Mediterranean because uh, um, it's a key uh, crop uh, around. And uh, yesterday we had uh, a lot of evidence related to the food quality, the importance of the Mediterranean diet, the biodiversity. So it's a um, a very important um, issue and. Uh, uh, the impression I have, apart the, the results you did, that there are still a lot of improvement that could be done quite, let's say, easily, no? without a uh, big uh, effort. Um, so now I'm, I'm going to, um, uh, to invite to the, to the stage uh, Prof Professor Martinez from, sorry, uh, Caricla Minotto, um, that will present a uh, uh, path through the biodiversity methodology of recording, monitoring, and promoting its importance and uniqueness. So, um, uh, a research uh, that uh, has been done in uh, Zakinta Island. And, um, and then we will, uh, rise, we will open for discussion and, and questions. So, I, we finish the presentation and then we, we will do some interaction at least, I hope. Thank you, Karina, uh, please, the, yes. the floor is yours. Good evening, and um, I will um, present you uh, a research that we have done. Yesterday we have um, presented uh, the first part of the research, and now is the second part, because uh, the first was the strategic plan in an holistic way, as a I have already described. And in the frame of an interreg program, we have done many different studies. And one of um, these studies are this one, uh, which is the creation of an eco, agro-ecotouristic plan and management for the area of Zykinthos. And already we have um, um, uh, find uh, a project uh, that, uh, and we will uh, extend uh, this program to uh, close islands as Kefalonia, Ithaki, and Kerkia, and uh, really soon uh, will be paths uh, through the biodiversity for all the Ionian islands. The idea, uh, uh, stable and based on the way that I present also yesterday for the strategic plan is that uh, we have not only think about uh, the agro-ecosystems, but also see the environment in a different and, uh, let's say, in a mono, more holistic way. Uh, the aim of the study was um, how ecotourism can positively influence ecological protection and restoration necessary in envir environmental degraded areas because uh, in all these islands we have repeated fires. So let's say it's a challenge uh, to include uh, uh, different parameters as concern the agriculture but also environmental issues in order to ensure that uh, the environment will be uh, protected in uh, the best way. And the objective of the study were just uh, firstly to facilitate the protection of, uh, and conservation and the ecological restoration of natural and cultural for sure heritage, then to enhance the environmental education and awareness because we believe that if local societies, schools or universities, because we have uh, different universities in all the island islands with the topic of organic agriculture, with the topic of ecology, so it's really related with the, this um, subject and the study. So we have uh, to include people just to uh, disseminate the importance uh, uh, to protect this uh, fragile environment. And then um, the last um, objective of the study 
study was, uh, was to empower the local community financially because uh, it's really important to have, uh, let's say, an uh, entrepreneurship that uh, is viable for everybody because uh, if we don't have uh, good models also in an economic aspect, nobody will be, uh, nobody, okay, uh, less people will be, less, let's say, um, like and admire and be interesting to protect the environment. The area of the study, as I told you before, started from the Zykenthos Island. It is in the Ionian Sea, as you can see there. Uh, we have done, um, it's a uh, not big island, it's uh, of uh, 406 uh, uh, square kilo kilometers. We have uh, three protected areas, that means that we have different uh, ecosystems and uh, it is important because uh, we have many, many species written and registered to the Red Book. Uh, moreover, we have one protected area by legislation, uh, is the National Marine Park of uh, uh, Marine Park of Zykynthos, and it is uh, really important to mention here that according to the legislation in, in this protected area, because it has also marine and terrestrial area, it is um, obligatory that uh, to the core zone of the park, we, it is supposed to have only organic agriculture. That means that uh, probably it's the first time in Greece, and I hope uh, I don't know what happens in the other Mediterranean countries, uh, that um, a really core zone, uh, the people and, uh, who, are, who are involved with uh, agriculture have to follow organic because uh, they cannot do otherwise. It's a really good, uh, let's say, pressure uh, because we can influence uh, the other uh, uh, stakeholders as concern uh, agriculture in the area because uh, they have to follow that because specific logo from the park has been created, so is a really good motive. Uh, here is the area of the park. You can see is all the yellow zones. That means we have many, many terrestrial areas. And um, in these areas we have um, uh, olive groves, uh, grapes for wine, grapes for currants, and uh, some but not so many uh, citrus and some vegetables. Uh, what about the methodology of the study? Um, as I told you before, it is uh, the second step of uh, different studies for the area Natura 2000 uh, uh, areas of uh, the Zykenthos Island. And firstly, we have record and uh, a recording and GIS mapping of the natural resources, biodiversity of the Natura 2000 area. What I mean? Uh, because probably somebody can uh, ask uh, why it is important to record that. It is important because uh, if we have uh, different uh, organic farms, it's just a hot spot in a map. If we, if we have it in a, a, in a path, let's say, they are connected, it is already a network. If this path of the organic farms are linked and connected with different biodiversity priorities areas and other landmarks, it is also important just to link them with um, all the agricultural but also professional, uh, let's say, priorities that a region has. Then the second that we have done is to record in a mapping the cultural wealth of the region because in this area we have many, many cultural uh, monuments and it is important to link, to link also uh, as a gastronomy, as monuments, as buildings, as history, uh, part of uh, the agriculture with this, kind, this uh, culture of uh, the area. Then the third that we have done is to record in biodiversity, uh, sounds and soundscapes. Um, I described it a little bit um, yesterday, but uh, as I think that uh, you were not all of you here, it is based on the acoustic ecology. Uh, that means that uh, we don't have only the, uh, the landscape, but also the soundscape. That means that we can record and map all the areas also and the biodiversity for sure, also through the sounds that we can hear, and uh, that um, facilitate us to communicate this material that we have produced also for disabled. Why? Why the biodiversity is easy uh, to understand if it is um, 
uh, near the sea, if it is in the middle of uh, an area that we have only cultivation, if it is mountainous, if we have trees or not, just imagine uh, the different sounds that you can hear. And also one of uh, the next steps that we have uh, already designed is just to record all the sounds, so for example, of olive cultivation. That means that somebody, somebody can um, imagine everything also by hearing. Uh, then uh, the last uh, step uh, was that uh, we have preparing a proposal for alternative development and um, it was the creation of the path. Uh, as uh, I already told, it is in the frame of indirect program, so it was a really, really good start because we had the opportunity to do different studies and combine them for the best uh, results. Uh, about the new technologies that we have applied, the, we have uh, GIS and GPS for tablet and mobile system for the mapping. We spent more uh, than um, two years, let's say, uh, to go around to, uh, for field work and record and photo and uh, video and uh, GIS mapping all the areas. Why? We, because uh, we are trying just to record all the different ecosystem and the dispersion uh, in the area. It is really, really important to have the same, let's say, hotspot, but in different areas. Then we have cameras and videos for audiovisual record, specific recording system for soundscapes. And uh, then, uh, the importance is just to protect the environment. Conservation of the biodiversity. And uh, it's a significant tool just to map these areas because they improve our knowledge. What have we done? Uh, we created virtual maps of the area and uh, it's easy that somebody also uh, from the house or from uh, informative kiosk or from uh, the material that we have produced to travel there and see the important issues about the biodiversity. And uh, here it was an idea and we have a try, it was an example that we have done. Um, as uh, you will see later, one of the ecosystems that uh, we have uh, decided to, to be uh, under our, um, in the frame of the study was uh, the wild orchids. And um, as it is really wild and really, and really fragile uh, that somebody knows where are, uh, we put um, uh, an idea and we have uh, adoption from schools for the paths. That means that uh, children have to protect and monitoring during spring, all these uh, uh, different spots, spots with um, orchids. We have uh, the local involvement, but at the same time, they have to protect. If they, they cannot find uh, one flower, it was really, really upset. So it was good for us because we have, let's say, uh, continuously monitoring. We have done the mapping. We put the species that uh, are there, and the tiles have to be just to once a week or every 15 days just to uh, show to another school uh, what happens there, and just to control that, uh, like a monitoring, okay, a sample monitoring, uh, that everything is okay. And it, uh, let's say a trick uh, just to uh, monitoring and just at the same time um, educate people how to protect uh, this fragile ecosystem. And uh, what, uh, which were the main criteria for our mapping? Uh, the main villages or all other important landscapes of the area, specific significant environmental areas. As I told you before, we have uh, three different Natura 2000 areas and one protected area, so it's really uh, important for us to uh, promote that. The main occupation of the population, because uh, uh, we have to involve them. If um, the biodiversity, the social biodiversity, or the social diversity, if you want, it's really important because we have to um, promote gastronomy or different activities or traditional uh, events that we have during summer. And then the cultur cultural monuments. Uh, three different ecosystems have been included is the ancient olive uh, groves. We have many in the island. Some of them uh, are recorded uh, more than um, uh, 500 years. Then we have uh, different species of wild orchids, and then important environmental areas. 
Uh, why we have uh, decided uh, to include these three uh, different, completely different ecosystems? Because we have dispersion all around uh, the region. Uh, what about the Asian olive oils? Uh, we heard just before a really good presentation about the olive trees and the olive cultivation. We know the importance for all the Mediterranean basin. Uh, uh, but uh, also, when we have uh, olive trees that uh, it could be monuments, uh, it's uh, better to protect them. And uh, why to protect them? Because we have redu reduction or loss of the biodiversity because of uh, the change of land use. Uh, the change of land use, of course. The change of climatic and environmental conditions could influence this ancient olive growth. Uh, and uh, for telling uh, the last one is the lack of strategic plan for their management and protection. You can see some of the trees, we have many, but some of them are really like, uh, let's say, monuments or arts. And uh, the idea as a next step uh, could be just uh, to put them number and create, uh, we have already mapped them with GIS and just put paths through the Asian uh, olive groves uh, trees and probably involve people there just to tell a story, create a myth, or give the possibility to be part, also tourists, because uh, the area is a mass touristic uh, destination, uh, just to, let's say, admire this uh, unique ecosystem. What about the orchids in uh, Zykinthos? Uh, according to uh, the studies, uh, we have a, a range of four different uh, uh, species. It, it was amazing because all the team that we were in the field when we were out uh, during spring, because the one come, uh, they are not uh, all of them um, appear in the same period, it was, you know, like a, a competition who will find the new one who will appear the next week. Uh, so we, we were able just to resist uh, for the first year of uh, the study, 30 of the 40, so we have next year to continue. You can see in the picture some of them, and uh, some are specific for the Ionian area. Uh, here is some of the paths that uh, one of them is uh, the one uh, that one school has adopted. And uh, as I described you, it was really amazing how interesting it was for child just to monitoring, okay, not really monitoring, but help us to control that no, nobody will destroy all this uh, ecosystem. And uh, we have done uh, a, a work about also Strophades Island. There are a small islet, 42 mi uh, miles um, away from Zaginthos. There are a specific ecosystem. We have many birds that are coming from Africa, early spring, but also we have a different ecosystem as uh, Uniperus. And um, we have cultural, it is a, a really, really old building there. It's uh, from the church, so it's a really, really good. We have agricultural activities because we have monks there. It's a monastery, the, the building you can see. So it's, uh, it was a challenge uh, to influence, let's say not um, uh, to follow organic uh, activities there, but environmental friendly because uh, the monk uh, was really, really old, so it was not easy. Uh, here is the monastery and uh, some of the birds that have been recorded, just uh, by recording the biodiversity and uh, just uh, trying to check about the different species that uh, they are coming there. And uh, for the conclusions, because I have a short video if I have uh, uh, time, if not, it's okay. No, no, the video is big. No, it's not big. But I can stand in many, let's say, minutes just to show you about uh, the way that uh, we proceed all this uh, study. So, uh, the conclusion is that uh, ecotourism is a new development mode, new, okay could be a new development model just to see it in a different way uh, through the promotion of the authentic old and connecting with the new as well as uh, through environmental protection. Then uh, uh, ecotourism is called to play an important role in increasing tourist activity and change, let's say, the touristic profile. Uh, it is important to involve local people, as I told you before. 
and the promotion of uh, the unique value of biodiversity of mine, at mine to an area of Zykenthos and all the other protected areas in Strophades Island is really important. Just the first step, that just to connect the second islands. Here is a landscape, I like it. Uh, if you haven't visited uh, the area, you, you have to be there. And uh, I have two or three minutes, okay. No, 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 less than that. Just to show you, no, it's not this mine. I think it's that. I hope it will work. Yeah. Yes. Um, the really important is just uh, sometimes probably I will uh, ask you to close your eyes and just hear. It's up to you. You have to decide. The idea is that uh, we record the past every time. And uh, we have a small description of the path. You can see the ants in all groves here. And then uh, you can have to recognize if it is summer or winter, if it is night or uh, day. The different species that you can hear. Uh, we are we do many, many descriptions, landmarks, for, because we put that to the past, trying to, let's say, facilitate somebody who has to be there to understand where he is, and just to have a really good description. We were trying just to include the different landscape of the island, the different activities, that means that we have to risk it. Marine areas, but also you can hear, for example, it's summer, for sure summer. Uh, for sure it's day, because it's heat. This uh, sound is only during the day. And um, we have different, we have a specific uh, records for the day or the night, but we are trying just to explain about the different species and uh, what they can recognize in each area. Beautiful places, beautiful places that, uh, okay, they are not only beautiful to see them, but also, them, but also to recognize species. We have many, many wild uh, aromatic plants. That means it's easy for us. Uh, to explain to the visitor or somebody who has to see that in a virtual way how he has recognized uh, different species. Okay, we are in Greece. Uh, here we are describing the vegetation, for example. Uh, we are describing the different species because uh, it's part of the biodiversity. Uh, there it was also an organic farm. Και μυζήθρες, τα δύο uh, νησάκια που φαίνονται και από αυτό, όπως το Ρίκι, το Δενδρολίβανο, το Φασκόμιλο, οι Μυρκές και φυσικά πολλά πέφκα με το γλυκό It's uh, an area with uh, some cultural uh, landscape Μετά το κερί, uh, και ακολουθώντα τον it's δρόμο προ τον Αγάλα, συναντάμε καμένε περιοχέ um, αλλά και σημεία. It is a, a combination of agriculture but also cultural issues. You will see the grapes, the ancient, the ancient olive groves, and uh, you can see in the middle of the wheels uh, where they collect uh, waters. And you can hear for sure. It's like summer. Φτάνοντα στην περιοχή που βρίσκονται τα πηγάδια των δρόμων, το οποίο χαρακτηρίζεται από καλλιέργειες όπως οι ελαιώνες και οι μελώνες. Οι ονόβοι ελαιώνες της Ζακίνθου αποτελούν μνημείο της φύσης. Οι κορμοί μοιάζουν με γλυπτά και η τέχνη της φύσης ολοκληρώνεται με τα κλίματα τα γεμάτα στα φύλλα. Την ταυτότητα σε σχέση με τα αρχιτεκτονικά της Ζακίνθ old buildings and uh, some tradition with gastronomy, with receipts and, uh, uh, let's say, uh, places that uh, somebody has to visit. The church of the church of the church of the I think it's uh, one step before, yes. Uh, we have also cooperative. You can see different uh, landscapes. Some are fires in the island. The areas that are used to use the wine. The wine. And uh, it 
was the last part of um, the park when we have uh, many, we have uh, also promoted uh, agricultural activities that concern the husbandry. Είχε και αρώματα μοναδικά. Στην περιοχή hear, υπάρχουν έντονες αγροτικές δραστηριότητες, όπως μελίσια, κτηνοτροφία, καλλιέργεια. Χαρακτηριστικά είναι τα πρόβατα της Ζακίνθου που ανήκουν σε μια αυτόχθονη φυλή. Είναι μεγαλόσωμα, μακρύουρα και προστατεύονται από ειδική νομοθεσία. Thank you very much, Carithia, for this very nice... Actually, I will tell you, I was in holiday there and I recommend. I think this is the, <laughs> the best promotion I can do about this place. Um, okay, uh, I would like to ask you if you have uh, comments, uh, questions, specific questions about the different uh, paper or something to add related to the uh, ecological sustainability of organic farming short uh, point could be for contribution or yes pablo please yes Concetta is here she is here yeah yes Pablo Titonel asked what, scusa, uh, ha chiesto cosa possiamo ancora in, imparare da questo long term experiment. Ci sono ancora dei dati, una... conclusioni ancora possiamo trarre dopo tutti questi anni di confronto. Vieni qui, come, come here, Concetta, sorry. I think it's very difficult to find the right conclusion because uh, the system is evolving uh, with us. So there are many, many things that we, have not, uh, mm, we don't know very well. The, complex, the complexity of the system is, uh, I think, one of the, of the most interesting th um, things to look at. We, we say that uh, we are looking at using an holistic approach, but it's very difficult to be able to see all things as part of a system. So we, are, we, we must improve our approach uh, in holistic sense, and uh, we must look at biodiversity, especially soil biodiversity. The soil, I think, is the um, sector we have to study more in a deeper way because we don't know many things about uh, microorganisms, uh, communities, uh, as a relation between uh, tillage of soil and uh, life in soil. I think this is uh, the more important things. Maybe if I can just add one, one thing, uh, is uh, probably it's, it's, um, we have done, for, for, but we can improve still the uh, Montepaldi is a kind of pilot project, so now it's time, it was already, but let's say to improve the dissemination, so the involvement of, of farmers, so in order to um, exchange more this uh, knowledge between us, uh, let's say the group and, and, uh, and the farmer. This is something that uh, uh, I think it's, uh, it's a good way to, to, share, yeah, to share knowledge in, bo in both sense. Yes, uh, uh, to improve also the ability of, of uh, farmers to judge their work uh, and to improve uh, their approach because uh, it's uh, necessary that they are able to use a simple uh, instrument to uh, make an evaluation of the work they have, they have done. 
And th this is not all <laughs> at, uh, um, We are working in a project, in a core organic project, uh, about soil fertility, just uh, to prepare a simple instrument for, for farmers uh, to uh, be able to verify the soil fertility, not uh, uh, using a difficult chemical or organic analysis, but just looking at soil and trying to understand what is going on. Uh, yes, okay, one, sorry, I saw him, but Prego. Looking at the size of your uh, uh, plots, uh, I was wondering uh, to what an extent, uh, whether it will be very disruptive for the long-term experiment to introduce also different varieties. Of after plots? Of what? Sorry, I didn't understand. Different varieties of any crop, uh, different ah, varieties yes, yes. of wheat. Oh, of course. Okay. Uh, uh, to, to, to look at the interaction. The, the, I'm sorry, but uh, in this period no, I okay. cannot hear no, it no, correctly. Okay. So yeah. I have to introduce oltre a diverse specie anche le diverse varietà. Miscuglio varietà. Sì, miscuglio varietà. So we are doing some work with a colleague of, of us, uh, Stefano Benedettelli, on uh, cereals to use a mixture of uh, cereals, not just uh, single varieties, but we are just starting. Yeah. Um, there was, um, there was uh, yes. Alfio, please. Yes, Alfio, please. Alfio? I'm not an agronomist, I'm uh, an agricultural economist and an ecologist, and uh, I use homeopathy, and when I hear about weeds, I mean, there are no good or bad symptoms. There are just symptoms in homeopathy, and all symptoms are very important because they sort of convey, represent a status, a condition of the body. So if you get rid of something that is produced by a soil and consider that as weeds, so, well, this is a shame. We do not understand the usefulness of the things that we consider as useless. So, in an ecosystemic approach, we cannot say that spontaneous herbs, uh, well, uh, can be used and we should not use them weeds. Thank you. We do agree. When we sort of uh, created our first experiments in a certain very dry area of Syria, we had a pest in the beginning, um, a, a weed that is cinnabis with yellow flowers. And um, so I talked to some experts. We did not want to use chemicals, and we decided to call some uh, close-by women to do a sort of hand-picking of these uh, wild herbs. And then at the end, I asked uh, these women how much they wanted as salary. And uh, they took those uh, weeds and they said, oh, are you giving us all that? Uh, this is precious for our sheep. And then you also want to give us money? So those uh, weeds to us was about collecting forage plants to be given to animals. And uh, so I do agree. And I do the same in my vegetable garden. And But at company level, how can I say? I mean, we do not have this opportunity. We do not uh, have people, but of course. And uh, sorry, probably we do agree. And uh, so we have been trying to think about the function of single species that are used in the organic sector because flora evolved in a certain way. And uh, so if you have a look at the ecological services that can be done by every species if properly managed. So again, this is uh, something else that has been done. 
After a few years, after four or five years, the balance between uh, wider uh, weeds and uh, sort of grown weeds, there is a, di a different balance. I mean, after a few years, we see that uh, the wild, the weeds, uh, are much more, but it's uh, a different sort of uh, level of presence. The Shannon index reduces, goes down, and there is a different balance in the system. And so I just want to add something about these weed, about this issue. Yeah, he provoked me because in in our farm four or five years ago, we had uh, this uh, sort of uh, invasion, and we tried uh, to sort of do something. We picked loads of that uh, weed, uh, and it was given, uh, it was eaten, and it was so. This weed uh, issue was solved by eating it. So again, through synapses of answers. So when we see this weed now, this uh, wild grass, no problem. It is not cut, it is not mown, but well, we pick it, we collect it. So again, I want to specify that because we have been sort of using that uh, for the last four or five years. Okay, Nicholas wanted the mic. Can you translate, Paola? Uh, not for France, not. Those so plants, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, even are not. Francese, no, I'm sorry, no, I'm not Francese, able. Francese, si, ma non sento uh, la domanda. Uh, Entiende. <laughs> Those plants are, are not uh, so are so indicative because they indicate. I'm a farmer, not an agronomer. They indicate us that we have to have biodiversity intraspecific, but also extraspecific, because always in the nature for health and fertility, biodiversity interspecific is the way, and in all uh, traditional agriculture who is also really in the future for agroecology, all are a mix of plants, and we have to find a way in the modern agriculture to make it. It's really very productive, very uh, with health and... Okay. Thank you. Yes? Uh, can you bring the... So this is uh, fostering biodiversity not on scale of a farm, but on scale of a whole region or an island. And I just wonder uh, how far in this particular project, or maybe in other projects, is it possible then to go back to the farmers giving some priorities or, or getting their feedback or generating also an increase of biodiversity on the level of the farm based on what you have seen on the level of the whole region? So the, the question, I think, is for Cariglia Minotto that was talking. In did this you, particular project, yes. Is it possible to repeat it? Because Karen was talking about another issue. Yeah, he, he asked which are, let's say, looking at the landscape level of biodiversity, which could be the recommendation or anyhow the improvement that could be done in order to, to have best practice at farm level. So the higher scale, what are the benefits for the lower scale? So as concerns the landscape, it is important to, let's say, respect uh, the land use from the past. That means um, it's a re really good learning to see what uh, uh, was... Sorry. Uh, Microphone. Yes, yeah, so what was uh, in the past uh, there in the area, uh, the varieties that uh, have been cultivating about uh, the different activities. For sure, it's not possible as we are coming... Uh, and uh, we are changing uh, year by year and uh, we have a development. It's not uh, easy to stay in the same way as in the past, but 
The idea is that landscape has to be protected, has to have core zones with the biodiversity, also for uh, just to ensure that all, that all the species uh, will be there. Also for organic agriculture, as all of, uh, as all of us uh, we know, it is important to have uh, hences or uh, corridors or uh, some areas that uh, the uh, useful uh, insect and uh, the enemies could be there and just uh, uh, let's say, uh, be useful for our cultivations. But uh, the landscape has, as it is possible, not to be changed. That means stay with the same varieties, not to change, uh, respect the land use, the existing land use, and for sure, if we have specific measures and uh, according to legislation, we have uh, strictly to follow that. It, it was not exactly the question. Um, my question is when you have a biodiversity plan at, at a region level, at upper level, some kind of stewardship, um, in such project, in this project or in other projects, is it possible or useful uh, to go back to farmers because you will have some priorities. There will be endangered species, there will be some species you will, you will like to foster. So my question is in this kind of projects, um, do you practice going to farmers, explaining and having the farmers supporting the overall project by his measures on his particular farm? It was part of uh, my presentation yesterday, yes. We have to be back to the farmers, uh, if possible to educate them, for sure uh, uh, give them the, the knowledge what they have to protect and uh, see in an holistic way, have a strategic plan which will include also in a policy level different strategies but also uh, starting from the farmers just to protect their uh, organic or uh, okay sustainable activities as concerned the agriculture and see that as part of the whole environment of a region but for sure we have to educate and contact them yes uh, sorry, uh, Della Francesca, Maria, have, no, okay, Professor Pauletti have a comment or a question? Yeah, with, with my students, sometimes I say uh, that we are paid to teach, not to learn. And this is a big problem. When we go in other country or we see other situations, sometimes we impose our ideas uh, because we have a, an history and so on but we never or we have little time to understand exactly what people is doing. And sometimes farmers have a good solution for their problems. And we have to uh, examine uh, in depth uh, local farming activity, I think. And there are some problems in Mediterranean. Uh, the sheep and the goats. God especially has created big problems. We cannot uh, forget it. Especially in the islands. And I, it's difficult to me to think something good connected with uh, goats. Except the fact that they are very effective in producing milk, meat, and, and uh, maybe uh, excrement for uh, other crops. But it's a problem. It's a big problem in Amazon when they put uh, goats on sheep uh, in some places. Uh, Yusri, Professor Yusri. Back, back. Yusri Hashem from University of Cairo. Thank you. Actually, I would like to ask you you presented that the carbon sequestration reached up 14% more in the organic fields comparing with the conventional fields. In how many years actually you reached up this ratio? Um, the, the, study I, uh, the study we, we published was a four-year um, four crop rotation, cropping system study. So we compare um, the, like, like the total, uh, the, the soil, how was four, four years before and after four years, sorry. So the T0 was 
in four years. Okay. And we calculate the amount of uh, uh, input into the soil and, and then the soil analysis, both. Okay, thank you. The second question actually to the, uh, the colleague from Turkey, he, uh, he, he presented something about the green cover. But actually during these years and the climate change and global warming and so on, what's actually the effect of climate change on the green cover along the year? Where is Emre? Emre? Yeah. Ah, you didn't hear the question. Yeah. Um, my question about the green cover. You know, the climate change affect uh, the, 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 the green cover everywhere in the world, especially in the arid areas. In your experiment, was your green cover along the, the whole years of a study or it was fluctuated some years so and some years was no green cover at all? The, micro ma the microphone, please. Microphone. Oh, yeah. okay. So I give a review of information about uh, some projects. Uh, in Turkey and also some information, a little bit of information, let's say, about my PhD, but uh, I didn't give any results in, my, in this project directly about the project. So, yeah. Okay, so I think we, we can close the session now. I would like to thank both the speaker, but also the patient and uh, uh, active, uh, let's say, public, and um, it's time for coffee break, I think we all deserve, and so we can move upstairs and we'll be back in, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes if possible to start the last uh, session, okay? Thank you very much.